Welcome into our lunch break, ladies and gentlemen. A fine day here in our Enid studios. Chris Morale is hosting once again. And once in a while, we do get the opportunity to speak to some fine folks and legislators that represent the state of Oklahoma. Today is no different. I would like to welcome in Mr. Senator Enhoff. He is over in Washington, D.C., kind of uh, perusing and making sure that everything goes about the right way for his constituents back here in the Sooner State. First and foremost, Mr. Enhoff, how are you today? Uh, we're good. You know your listeners are going to wonder if I ever go to Washington. Uh, <laughs> I was there just last week, and you you guys sponsored uh, one of the sponsors of that uh, Agra seminar thing that they had there, and I really enjoyed that, enjoyed all the people that were there uh, for that. But last night, uh, it really, uh, we're calling around this morning to uh, talk about the State of the Union message. I, you know, I, I, the president just did an incredible job, and he covered my three favorite issues. And I, I people judge for themselves what they, you know, how effective he was. Uh, uh, I can assure you that uh, the Democrats here in Washington, there's a level of hatred they have that I've just, I've never seen anything like. One, one of the conversations today, you'd get a kick out of this, was how are we going to do this? We don't want to stand and applaud, and yet we have a lot of people back in my home state, they'd say from different states, that uh, really like what he's doing, and I don't want them seeing me sitting without applauding. They're trying to decide how they can have it both ways. <laughs> So anyway, they didn't have it uh, both ways, but it was kind of fun to watch them try. The, the three areas that I was most concerned about, I know you know this because we had interviews as recently as a week ago. But yes, sir. They, those areas are, one is national security, uh, of what uh, President Obama did uh, during the, his eight years in terms of our military, our maintenance problems we have right now. All you have to do is go out and talk to someone out at Vance, and they will tell you, you know, uh, of the of the problem is the fact that uh, our air brigades in the United States Army, uh, only a third of those are actually working right now. Remember the F-18s that were so popular and we, you know, we love them and all that. And that's what the Marines exclusively fly. And 62 percent of those can't fly right now. So those are the problems that we have. And I think the president did a great job last night of letting people know the threat that we're facing in this country. Uh, even referring to North Korea, which I think is necessary because on the 28th of November, North Korea launched a missile that actually had a range that would reach um, Enid, Oklahoma. And so I thought he did a good job of saying we're going to have to give the, uh, go back to where the number one uh, uh, concern in Washington should be rebuilding our military. you got to keep in mind – I can remember the days when the military used to consume over 50 percent of the budget, uh, and now it's down to 15 percent. So we've got to uh, – and the, I think, that, you know, the president did a very good job on that issue. That was one he was wrestling with. The second thing that I thought he did very well is make it real clear what he's going to do with infrastructure. Now, I'll be involved in that because I do uh, uh, chair that committee, and uh, we're going to get very, very busy and. I will be, again, critical of Obama because you remember nine years ago when he was first elected, he said, went to Congress, and at that time they had total control of everything. He went to Congress and he said, I need to have $800 billion for uh, infrastructure for America, for our roads and highways. And so he, he won. He got $836 billion. And you know how much he ended up spending on roads and highways and bridges? How much was that? Three percent. Three. How? Three percent. So all that's people say, how did he get all these things funded on his uh, all of his environmental stuff? That's where it came from. Well, I think that um, we realize now that we uh, have a lot of catching up to do, and we are doing it. And by catching up, I might mention that uh, who might who did I give my ticket to? Oh, uh, Harold Ham. You know Harold Ham. He's a, he, in fact he was originally from there. Yes, uh, sir. Harold Ham is he's the guy that is uh, is is the real hero in terms of officially ending uh, Obama's war on fossil fuels. And he's, he's actually, Harold Hamm is actually exporting oil to China as we speak. I mean, it's, it's just totally uh, changed. And that's one reason our economy is doing so well. But anyway, each member of the Senate and each member of the House only has one ticket in the gallery to give away. I gave mine to Harold Hamm. So, um, you know, you probably saw him on, on the, the balcony shots up there. Uh, the, la the last thing that I, I thought he handled very well is, without doing it in an arrogant way, talk about the huge benefits from the tax cuts. The 
Democrats, and as recently as, oh, I don't know, as, as today, uh, Schumer was out there talking about how we can't afford, we, we shouldn't have afforded all those tax cuts because that takes revenue. What well, doesn't? That builds revenue. It was Obama, that was uh, uh, Kennedy way back in 1962 who said, we've got to have more money coming into the federal coffers to pay for all the, the, the programs that we want to have for the American people. He said the best way to increase revenue is to decrease marginal rates. And you remember at least reading about this. He took the top rate of uh, 90%, brought it down to 70%, and comparable rates, other rates going down. As a result of what he did, that increased revenue four years after that from, from, uh, by 30%. And then the same thing happened in 1981 when Reagan came in and did the same thing. So I'm planning on using the revenue from the tax cuts uh, to do, handle the, the neglected areas that are very expensive, one in rebuilding our national security, our military, and the other, of course, transportation. Of course, lots of different things that were discussed in yesterday's State of the Union for President Donald Trump. The only real question I have to ask you here, Senator Inhofe, if local Oklahomans, both here in Enid as well in northwest Oklahoma, uh, some of our listeners, they want to reach out to either you specifically or some other representatives that currently sit in Washington, D.C., uh, how can your constituents best reach you, get their questions to you, so that way they are brought uh, to the Senate floor for you to express to all oh, the I, I can I can tell you, and that opens the door for another opportunity. My website is in Inhofe.senate.gov. Now, I know you know that, but sometimes you have to repeat that. If people want to get it down. And, and what they'd like to get from that right now, I hope, are two things they can get by ex- accessing my website. One is I made a list with a breakdown of the 70 uh, redu- uh, efforts of the overregulation that we had from the previous administration. And, uh, and th- I have that list so they can, th- they'd be surprised about some of these regulations. And the other thing, all of the companies, 134 companies doing business in Oklahoma that have already done something really generous for their employees as a result of the, uh, uh, of the uh, tax reductions that came with the tax reform. So that's the easiest way. And secondly, if you use that to, uh, to uh, make a phone call, give an idea uh, uh, on the website what it's about, and then we'll get back with you. Uh, now, we also have three... Uh, offices in Oklahoma. We have one there in Enid. Uh, actually, we have four if you count. Uh, yeah, yeah, four. We have one now that's open down in southeastern Oklahoma. So they can call those. Those are listed, and uh, we'll, we're very reachable. He absolutely is. He is doing fine work over at the United States Senate in Washington, D.C. He is Senator Jim Inhofe from the state of Oklahoma doing some fine work and giving us a little bit of an insight into both President Donald Trump's State of the Union address just yesterday as well as other ways to reach out to the senator himself in order to help out his constituents here in the state of Oklahoma, which I know he does every single day. Senator Inhofe, an absolute pleasure having you on our lunch break today. Look forward to speaking with you down the road. Well, Chris, you made my day. Thanks so much.